Okay, we've been talking about this movie ever since I've known you. It's aged perfectly. It's 20 years this month. Uh, in 2009, I wrote this piece about the defining movie of the 2000s, which isn't the best movie. It's a different conversation. And I landed on Almost Famous in 2009, which I don't think would be the answer now. But here's what I wrote. My three qualifications, excellence, excellence, originality, and this is crucial, rewatchability. I want a movie that's just as good on my 20th viewing as it was on the first. The seeds are right there. Look at you. This is lost in translation. Yeah. I think it's just as good every time. And in fact, I think it might be getting better. Is that possible? I think so. So much of what I like about Sofia Coppola's filmmaking, this is written and directed by my absolute hero, Sofia Coppola, is the attention to detail and the little things that she is noticing and the, you know, the way the lounge singer introduces the name of the band and like what kind of shoes someone is wearing. And those are the things you notice when you watch it over and over and over Scenes again. Scenes without dialogue. Yes, exactly. And something jumps out every single time. So I wrote down movies that have been nominated. And I don't know if Almost Famous was nominated, actually. But I had Almost Famous, Dark Knight, Lost in Translation, Brokeback Mountain, No Country for Old Men, There Will Be Blood, and Maybe Sideways as movies that, when they came out, were critically acclaimed. They had some sort of transcended just like the indie kind of artsy fartsy circles, but actually like hit in a sort of a mainstream way in some way. They broke stars and then they've had legs. And I think those are the seven from that decade. Of the 2000s. Yeah. That had, yeah, and I think the key is it had to have hit when it came out at least a little. This movie was nominated for an Oscar. This right. movie won Sofia Coppola screenplay Oscar. So it it had the kudos in the moment. But now I think it's aged and it gives birth to like Bill Murray's greatest performance and it creates the Scarlet era. This is 20 years later, but it, this sets her off in this crazy way. It's really remarkable. She was a child star. I, yeah. But I then, actually didn't know she was 18 when she filmed the movie. I, I was taken either. aback by that. I, so was I. And I thought she was like 22. Yeah. And she's playing someone who graduated from college recently and has been married, at least married young, but like 23, 24, 25. So she's she's the same age as my daughter. It yeah, doesn't no, didn't I know. make a lot of sense. No, to me. and she is she's the same age that I was when this movie uh was released. Yeah. So it's um there's just a lot of a lot of feeling there. She's an old veteran she is. 18. Exactly. But yeah, you would have thought she was like 24, 25. Um from the leg standpoint, so so Sophia Coppola never matches this, but you well, are a, a huge defender. Yeah, so do you want to so, let wanna do this now? Sure. Well, do you, you want to do Sophia now in general? Sophia's taken some hits on this podcast. I've been at home. I've been listening. It's okay. I'm not going to I don't like here. the Steven Dorff movie. I thought it was bad. You don't like Somewhere? Oh, I love no. Somewhere. No. Also, that's such a dad movie. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Well, you know she, what? She Nothing happens. I don't even know if it's a movie. <laughs> she does. She loves her dad, and her dad figures out Maybe I need how to, see to it again. leave the Chateau Marmont and also yeah. how to express his love for her. Great. So, Lost in Translation is her signature movie, and it's her breakthrough movie, her second after Virgin Suicides, which I'm literally, this is my Sophia Virgin Suicides yeah. homemade merch, special edition, wearing it just not homemade, but it's not, I don't know if it's official. And she's, at that point, she's doing music videos. Yes. And we know her from Godfather 3. Exactly. Which really her, and she's like it's a tough. cool. She's a cool fashion girl. She dates Keanu Reeves. Those are some great paparazzi photos if you've never seen those from the 90s. And her dad was one of the biggest directors of the last 30 years of the century. Exactly. So she's like, she is a, a Coppola. And and that is the, the nepotism, the Nepo baby thing is looming large. But Virgin Suicides comes out in 1999. is very good. And then Lost in Translation is like the movie. Yeah. Then she makes, and this is why I was like hedging just like a tiny bit at the opening, Marie Antoinette, which is my favorite. Huge comeback for that movie. I love that movie. It's my favorite of her movies, even though I think Lost in Translation is like the Sophia movie for all the reasons that you just said. And it's like a pop cultural moment. Well, you have more at stake with Marie Antoinette because it's also a Kirsten Dunst. Exactly. Yeah. yeah I mean, you, it's you like, need her. It's like all of the yeah, it's things, all your together. things together. And I am more of a Kirsten than a, like a ScarJo Justin, yeah. like demeanor. And then Somewhere, which I really like. Okay. Uh, you, you should see it again. It's also, have you seen it since, oh, well, you lived in LA in 2000. Oh, Pandemic? 
Maybe pandemic. A I was going to say L.A. Movie? movie just because, like, you know, I saw it in New York and then moved here. And then I was mm. like, oh, my God, Los Angeles. It is really hard to, like, swim in a pool and not mm. know what you're doing. Um, and then the 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 rest of the decade, she made Bling Ring, which I like that she tried. Uh, it's a... Yeah. Wouldn't rewatch it. No, but it's... I mean, it's a cool... And it's, like, a good project for her. Sometimes things work. Things well, she don't. has this Priscilla Presley movie coming out. I know. Out, I'm seeing it next which week. Which you're seeing in, in Italy. Venice. Yeah. I'm going to the premiere. I'm so... It's it's truly Sophia season. She has a book out. She's got the the new movie, 20th anniversary. It's What a time to be alive. It's one of those movies I didn't know was happening until a week ago when yeah. I started researching for this pod. Yeah. And I was like... What an incredible idea for a movie, Priscilla Presley. <laughs> and also a great Sophia movie because she yeah. makes movies about uh, younger women, uh, maybe in the shadow of men with very large personalities and yeah. cultural success. I'm not referencing anyone at all. Right. <laughs> um, but, but it fits. And it all, like the also the vibe, the moment it lends itself to style, to music, to costumes to everything that Sofia Coppola does in terms of making like a very visually cool experience. So we have the Barbie summer this summer yeah. and in general, like female filmmakers the mm -hmm. last five years. Nice little run. Yeah. Got some Shout directors out. out. My other hero. I think, I think people really want it to happen and realize the value of it at this point. What about in 03? What was the state? Let's see. So, I mean, this was a big deal. You had Jane Campion. Who else did you have in 2003? You had... Right, Jane Campion. Right. Uh, you had Not Amy Heckerling. Many. You had mm. Mimi Leader. I'm sure there's one person who... I, there's some Kath Kath Catherine Bigelow, Bigelow's working. obviously. Yeah. yeah. But it's not... I mean, still now... It's not awesome. It's it's The numbers aren't what you want. Yeah. You know, they weren't then, they aren't now. So, she described this movie as romantic melancholy. Mm-hmm which I liked. And she said, for everyone, there are those moments when you have great days with someone you wouldn't expect to, then you have to go back to your real lives, but it makes an impression on you. It's what makes it so great and enjoyable. Yeah. I like that theme because I think everybody's had those one or two times where you just kind of end up with somebody or a group of people that you didn't expect and you kind of make the best out of it, but it's actually way better than you thought it was going to be. Right. And, and then you always remember it. Yeah. And also the fact that it's finite and that it has an ending and it's just something that happened yeah. unexpectedly for a moment and your life goes on, but you always remember it. That adds to the romance for sure. And it's in this location that is just never in movies in this way. So you're, you're I mean, for me, like if I think of Tokyo movies, this would be the first one I thought of because it just, Tokyo is like a real character in this movie. Yeah. For me, it's a hotel movie. And I think specifically of- the Park Hyatt, which is the hotel where this right. is this is filmed. And it like when you rewatch the movie, a lot of it is in that hotel and the various And rooms. a hotel bar that just and stays open all night. An, I know. Incredible. With great performances. <laughs> with per, with, with yeah. musical performances at 4 yeah. 30 in the morning. Um so you know, the Tokyo is certainly the backdrop and they explore it a bit. That we can talk more about that. But for me also it is just that like the hotel as a place of kind of, it, again, that momentary like transience of like, I'm I'm here for now. This isn't where I live. Things are kind of, I'm just a little more open right. and also like a little more at sea than I usually would be. Yeah. And um, it's, it's weird because yeah. Garden State came out the same year as this movie. And I, I even though they're not similar really at all, yeah. I do think there's a similar vibe. Like Craig said how this was a very 2003 movie. Right. And I actually agree with that, especially like the early Phoenix that's in there. Do you, do you think the Craig music. meant that like in a in a positive way? I, listen, it might have been <laughs> insulting, but I chose to take it as it a positive. It wasn't insulting. Yeah. It, just as like a plain statement. It's sure. a very I mean, Craig, movie. how would you know? <laughs> but, well, no, he was, you were. I was nine. Yeah, you okay. were watching movies at that it point. It was just when I was forming memories. Okay. Yeah. That's great. This is an incredible Bill Murray moment in time. All time. Unreal. I'm going to give you the four stages of Bill Murray. Okay. Who's been in my life ever since I can remember anything. I think that Bill Murray has also been in my life since I have Well, he definitely had a has life. been in your life. Yeah. I'm, I mean, I knew him from watching the SNL reruns when right. I was like eight. Mm -hmm. So, and then Meatballs. And then from that point on, yeah. I'm just in with Bill Murray. So 77, 84, he has SNL, Meatballs, Caddyshack, Stripes, Tootsie, and Ghostbusters. And he becomes one of the biggest stars in the world. Mm -hmm. 85, 90. 
is the what do I do now era, which a lot of these actors have, especially the comic actors where he's got Razor's Edge. Everyone's yeah. disappointed in that. Scrooge, not a fun movie. <laughs> Ghostbusters 2. Huh, you had to do it. Quick Change, which I think has had some momentum as the years has gone as like, ah, that, no, it's actually pretty good. It's not very good. Then 91 and 2000, the comeback. What about Bob? Groundhog Day. Groundhog Day. Mad Dog and Glory, which is a better movie than I think people remember. He's in Ed Wood and Kingpin. He's in Space Jam. He starts doing weird, like, cameos and wild things. Rushmore, Charlie's Angels. SNL has gained steam. Yeah. He comes on SNL as a host, and he just becomes kind of this... The Rushmore, Charlie Angels moment is very important uh, to my generation. Because right. Rushmore is a, a Wes Anderson film, and that's kind of when I become aware of... Wes Anderson. Also, Bill Murray as someone who can do something other than Groundhog Day. And Charlie's Angel is also like keeps him mainstream enough. You know, there was a like, I was like 12. So yeah, I was like, oh, <laughs> there was a real credibility when he popped into yeah. things at that point. By the late 90s, it's like Bill Murray's going to be in Charlie's Angels. I have to take that movie seriously. But then 01 and 03, Royal Tannenbaum's and Lost in Translation. Yeah. This is when he kind of cements the legend. Mm -hmm. Because you could argue those were the two best movies, like dramatic movies that he's been in. Um, Lost in Translation is the best performance. And he doesn't win the Oscar. And it's never really the same after that. I I think it took something out of him. Then he kind of moves into this, you know, he's at Pebble Beach every year doing the golf course. He's (laughs) popping in different movies. He's just life aquatic. And I I like everything that he's done. It becomes a lot more erratic. Yeah. And he's he it's sort of like he's playing on the idea of Bill Murray that you have from Lost in Translation. And he's the the character of Bill Murray. Exactly. Yeah. He's not totally Bill Murray anymore, which isn't a bad thing or a good thing. But in this, they just catch him at the best possible stage of all of this. And also, Sophia is an amazing director. Right. She just gets him. She gets him completely. There's. In the background, she like wouldn't make the movie unless he did it. She yeah. badgered him for six months. She, she called the eight hundred number. Yeah, the eight hundred number. It's like it's all the lore now. Yeah. But she just basically beat him down. They start filming the movie. They have a four million dollar budget. He hasn't even signed his contract yet. Right. And they're filming it. They don't know if he's gonna pull out. She he shows up a week before. A notoriously not easy to work with guy. Right. But it seems like he and Sophia, at least, had a very positive experience. Is it okay if I just keep calling her Sophia like she's my best friend? I love it. <laughs> I love it. If you want to give her a nickname, that'd be great, too. she's just Sophia to me. So he loses the Oscar. Yeah. Who does he lose it to? (sighs) Sean Penn and Mystic River. Oh, okay. That's... I'd like a revise. The other nominees were Ben Kingsley and House of Sand and Fog... Jude Law and Cold Mountain. Oh, God. That's that's just a make-up for not giving him the Oscar for Talented Mr. Ripley. And Johnny Depp in the Pirates of the Caribbean. Wow. That's, 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 Rough category. That's disgraceful. So it came down to Sean Penn versus Bill Murray. And I think people thought Bill Murray was going to win, plus Sean Penn had already won. Bill Murray had never been nominated before. Right. Do you think that's a campaigning thing? And also just, you know, Bill Murray, we love him, but famously either gets along right, with you or do. does not get along with you. So if he's rubbing he's enough a grouch. people the wrong way. I have a real problem with this one. Yeah. I don't know if it's a level one Oscar travesty, but it's definitely a level two. Yes. Because it's, as you said, it's that thing where that was the opportunity. Like that was his this shot. Was it. And you know that it's never, it's it's never going to come back. It's like Tom Cruise and Jerry Maguire. It's like Eddie Murphy and Dreamgirls. Yeah. Like we have it where it's like, this is it. This is the shot. We've seen it a few times, even the last like five, six years. Glenn Close had that one moment recently. Don't you think she'll get another, another shot? Uh, how many times should she be nominated? At like eight or nine. This one really hurts because I don't, the movie that can't exist without him. You yeah. can't put any other actor from the ages of probably at the time they make this movie from early 40s to late 50s. Nobody fits. Yeah. It doesn't work. I mean, I don't want to step on recasting couch, but like, I don't know. I left it you, empty. Okay, good. I'm uh, Me too. Yeah. Sophia said she would not make the movie if Bill Murray didn't do it. So that's, that's where I'm going. There's a, Maybe Jack Nicholson, but he had to have been at least 12 years younger. Yeah. Because I, I even, like that. Like I watched with my wife last night yeah. and she's like, man, she's a lot older than her. She gave one of those because and she was thinking from the prism of I have an 18 year old daughter. Would I be cool yeah. with her spending all no, this time I, with a 52 year old man is. in Japan? Yes. 
It was the first time I'd really thought of it because I th always thought Scarlet was older, but then putting the 52 verse 18 thing, I was like, oof. They are they are definitely, there is an age gap. I, I like Jack, but he might be a little too debonair. You know, there's something about the revelation of like Bill Murray, who is sardonic and goofy, suddenly being so... He's always charming, but it's a different movie star kind of charm where you're just like, oh, you know, when he just like he cracks open. Well, don't you have to feel like the key to any actor in that spot? And this is why like Brad Pitt never could have played this part. Older Brad Pitt, like once upon a time in Hollywood right now, yeah. Brad Pitt, when they're lying in bed in the big scene near the yeah. end, I have to believe that he's not going to make a move on her. Totally. And if I feel like that actor is bringing any baggage of, oh, he's definitely going to make a run. Right. Jack, Jack Nicholson, I would feel like he's going to make a run. Brad Pitt will 100%. I, I'm not buying that he's not. Right. And you're also just- Leo's another one. Like Leo right Leo, now, there's course. no way he's not making a move. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's a little bit how you're, you're trained as a viewer to relate to these people. And you just, I mean, Jack has always been a little bit of a rogue in movies. Yes. Brad, Brad Pitt is always the romantic interest. And the nice thing about Bill Murray in this role is that I do think he's surprising and kind of like playing against the idea of Bill Murray, but not in the weird Lothario way that right. makes you uncomfortable because that scene can very quickly turn really uncomfortable. And instead, it's just wonderful. Well, he's the least flirty. He probably, he toned down the flirtiness, I think. Yeah. The most because he was a notoriously flirty guy in real life, but not too bad. But yeah. like even on SNL, like he fell in love with Gilda Radner um, right. and it played out over the course of like their last couple years of the show together. And, um, you know, I just think he's a charming guy, but he's also can be a very non-charming guy, too, if you catch him on the wrong day exactly. or yeah. whatever. So, you know, Harold Ramis. Had those stories about like, yeah, this guy didn't talk to me for 16 years. There's a long list of people who don't have the right vibe with him on set. And I think even, I, I sorry to step on trivia, but like that scene in the bed where they're talking, I think the first time they tried to film it, he, Bill Murray and There's Scarlett Johansson, issues. yeah, we're not yeah. getting along. And so like they came back the next day. Yeah, you could read between the lines with a lot of the research and it was like, there's probably a little more there that these two, it didn't, they didn't get along incredibly yeah. well the whole time. Yeah. But she was also 18, you know, and this was, was a big young, moment for her. And I think also... And he's difficult. He's, I think he's difficult. I do think also that, like, Sofia Coppola made this movie for him, you know? Yeah. So he, I think he probably is kind of like the, the shining star in her eyes. I mean, he's been so good in so many different movies. I think he's amazing in Tootsie. Yes. <laughs> it's such like a nothing part, and he's so good in it. Um, he, I mean, he's in some of the most iconic comedies ever. We've done What About Bob and Groundhog Day already mm -hmm. on the rewatchables. You know, I don't need to sell the Bill Murray thing, but I do think this is his best. I think it's his best performance. I don't know. It's not his funniest performance. It's not the biggest movie he ever made but i feel like well it's i that, personally think it's the most important one i completely agree it's that thing where someone you know like a true movie star tries something different completely lands it and it just it feels special even as it's happening and so he, what are other yeah. examples of this because like i brad pitt and moneyball was like this a yes. little bit for me oh because God. i was like oh i didn't realize you had this side in you um cruz and jerry Maguire was like this yeah when you have these big stars, but the, some, they, something shifts about the movie there and the performance where you're surprised, even though they've been in your life for so long. Right. I'm, I'm was there a Julia think. Roberts I version was, of this? Bill, you can read my mind because I was literally thinking Aaron Brockovich is like not quite that. It's kind, It's more like she got the role that she Just like Charlie Wilson's war um, could have been it, but it never got there. Yeah, that doesn't get there. She's very good in it. Yeah. Um, but you know what's a good one? Sandra Bullock and Blindside. Oh, yeah. A controversial movie oh, these God. days. Yeah. Oh, gosh. But she was great in that movie. Like, yeah. just hands down, she's great in that movie. And I was like, I didn't know she had this in her. I still think she's great in Miss Congeniality. I think that's the yeah. real underrated Sandra Bullock breakthrough. But yes. Yeah. Uh, as you know, she's the Nolan Ryan of I, I, I rom coms, as, I, as I've told you many <laughs> times. All right. So, Young Scarlet. This is in I'm Falling for You as I'm watching this performance, which happens a lot, especially with younger actresses mm -hmm. like it, Julie Roberts and Pretty Woman, definitely. Natalie Portman in Garden State, definitely. Sandra Bullock in Speed. 
No question. We were like, not only is this person great in this movie, but I know she's going to be in my life for the next 20 years. It was yeah. so clear that she was going to be an impactful actress. And, you know, I love to bring sports into this. She was immediately a high lottery pick. It was like, this person's going to have a long career. I would draft her with the number one pick in this year's draft. And she's had a really good career, right? Yes, especially the last 10 years. She takes, it like, it takes a minute after this, right? It sure does. There's... I, like, Nanny Diaries is the first thing that jumps into my head, which I remember. She, her 03 to 06 is really action-packed. She's in, like, the perfect score. She's in Matchpoint, which I think is a oh, great movie. right. She does all the Woody Allen movies. Matchpoint yeah. is amazing. I think Matchpoint's really great. Good, and she's she great in it. Astonishing. Yeah. Again, like, very, very young, but... um. Really, she's in the "What Goes Around" away. Justin Justin Timberlake video, which now belatedly controversial. No. Okay, that song, but she's okay. I didn't. She's in that, that but she's kind of all over the place for three, four years, and then you know had to kind of figure out who she wanted to be. Did she want right. to follow the Angelina, be an action star, make money that way? Do I want to be in comic book movies? Am I gonna, you know? And I, I think she figured it out eventually. Yeah, I mean, she got to be in Marvel for 10 years and I assume make a lot of money and also you know she works with Jonathan Glazer and she works with Noah Baumbach and it kind of has she managed to have both the blockbuster and the serious acting career simultaneously Iron Man 2 (laughs) that was that was the really bad one she she did a couple paycheck movies right she did the she was in he's just not that into you sure but everybody I'll take a check yeah everybody was in that we bought it we bought a zoo yeah we bought a zoo yeah But she starts getting weird in a good way around like 13 because she's in Don John. Mm -hmm. She's in Under the Skin. Yeah. Which people love. She's in Her. Uh, She pops in Chef. She's in Lucy. She just gets weird in a really great way. ScarJo being in Her is really fascinating. Right. But Her. Spike Jones Is directed by Spike Jones and is, you know, understood to be about his divorce yes. from Sofia Coppola. And in Lost in Translation, there Scarlett's a, yes. husband is supposed to be, be Spike, Spike Jones. Jones. Yes. Not a flattering Spike Jones portrayal. No, it's not. That's one of those where you see it in the movie and like, my wife made this movie. I'm going to see it tonight. And you're watching it going, wait a second. Well, are we in trouble? So there's a there's a great behind the scenes documentary or making of uh, mm. about Lost in Translation. That's like a DVD extra that I've watched several times. And a friend pointed out to me you know, it starts like a couple weeks before production and Spike Jones is there filming and interviewing Sophia and it's all very exciting. And then they actually start filming and then he's so suddenly no longer like anywhere to be seen oh. in the document. Now, I don't know. I mean, he was also very busy. He could be doing his own things. There's also right. a Lynn Hirschberg um, profile of Sophia Coppola that was released in 2003 for this movie. May I just read you one sentence from it? Or two sentences. In the last few months, Jones and Coppola have been distant, rarely living in the same city. Mm. It's been rough being apart so much, she explained, but we have to figure out our relationship after September 12th when the movie comes out. That's on the record to the New York Times magazine. And needs to say they got divorced a couple <laughs> years later. Yeah. yeah. And, then, and then, but that's what's so fascinating about it is so then Spike Jones makes his version of it. There's a Rooney Mara character who like definitely resembles Sofia Coppola. And Scar- Scarlett Johansson agrees to be the voice. And she's, I, you know, you could say that she's not taking sides, right? Or you, you could, could say that she's taking sides. Sophia cast her. She said she liked her from this movie, Manny and Low, which I don't think I've ever seen. I, I haven't either. She was 17, but I had this idea of her being this young Lauren Bacall type girl. I loved her low voice. You can't really gauge the chemistry until you do tests for shooting. I don't even think they'd met before we did. So I picked someone I liked and hoped that it worked and Bill is so lovable. It's a pretty big risk. Huge like, risk. I'm taking somebody who's about to turn 18. I'm putting her in a movie with Bill Murray and we're going to be filming it in Tokyo. And, and we hope Bill shows up. And we hope and, Bill shows yeah. up. The other thing that was amazing about this movie, Anna Ferris. And I, I think this is what pushed the movie over the top in the moment. She plays... Obviously, a, Car- a Cameron Diaz character. Right. And then everybody is taking great pains. No, no, it wasn't her. <laughs> and it's clearly her. There's no question. <laughs> right. It's not her. Or um, So she plays this ditzy blonde. And the story, who knows? I'm sure you've... 
I mean, really, there's no person better equipped to have yeah. this part of the conversation sure. than you in the world. Right. It's like bringing in the number one Michael Jordan expert thank, to thank talk so, about the baseball so sabbatical. Thank you so much. I've, I've, I've thought a lot about this. Yeah, let's I've hear it. Let's just hear Anna, all your theories. I've interviewed Anna Ferris, by the way. Um, yeah, but she, I don't believe her version of the story at this point. No, I don't either. So, She's not a reliable narrator. Um, she was lovely to me. I didn't have anywhere to go after the interview, so she just invited me to her house and gave me a lot of wine. So wow. I, she is wonderful. That's great. Anna Ferris is great. So Cameron Diaz was in Being John Malkovich, which is a Spike Jones movie. And then four years later, this scene where the um, the husband character, played by Giovanni Ribisi, but who definitely resembles Spike Jones. And Anna Ferris playing a, a bubbly, uh, spacey blonde. Ditsy. <laughs> yeah. Ditsy. I was trying to be generous. The B.O. thing was like like the all-time Cameron <laughs> Diaz reveal. Like, oh my God, right. I have the worst B.O. It's like I, Cameron Diaz has probably done that on a talk show. Exactly. Um, and they meet in the by the elevator banks and are it, clearly they've worked together. The yeah. Scarlett Johansson character, Charlotte, feels like on the outside is judging this person. And it is just so clearly the wife of a successful director writing about and doing yeah. a very funny send up. Like, no one gets off easy in this movie. Like, they, it's pretty harsh characters of a lot of people, including the lounge singer, my favorite. Yeah. But uh, the Anna Farah stuff is just incredibly, wonderfully vicious. Wait, so when Cameron Diaz made that movie Bad Teacher, yeah. there is an interview with her. So this is in 2014. So, and she says, I haven't worn deodorant for 20 years. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I mean, come on. I think it was actually so successfully mean mm -hmm. that they had to backtrack and distance themselves from yeah, it. Yeah, It's like, like, honestly, one of the most vicious characters that's been in a movie. And so funny. Perfect. Like, to the point that I actually thought she was going to become a major star because she was so good playing Cameron I really Diaz. wish she had that press conference where she's like, you know, Keanu and I we have so dogs. much in common. <laughs> we both live in L.A. We love Mexican food. It's just, oh, it's, it's beautiful. Amazing. Um, allegedly, Diaz has forgiven her former friend, <laughs> friend Coppola for the slate. That, that was it's in like, somewhere? Yeah, no, but that was just an unnamed source to Radar Online. I was like, great. I, mm. I'm, I'm glad everyone's found peace. I have a really hot take about this okay. uh, for later, but um, but this really helped because this is 03. The internet's in full shape in 03. We have the early versions of all these different message boards. The blogs are just starting to kick in. Yeah, but it's, in. it's before TMZ. No, but I'm still I'm yeah. aware of this as a subplot. Sure. But in a way that I wouldn't have been in, in but 1999. But it's also not supercharged like if it happened right now oh it'd be active it, it war. was like yeah. the don't worry darling press thing but like times four thousand. Yeah. there would be between social media tmz all of the you know cameron diaz would have had to say something yeah that, in 03 it could be like pretend it's not happening even though everyone exactly. knows it's happening one other thing about sophia i forgot to throw this at okay. you because she did get nominated she became the first woman to be Oscar nominated for writing, directing, and producing in the same year. And she wins. Kind of sobering. For 2003, that was the well, first time that I, listen, happened. The, just the, it's never what you want, you know? She wins for Best Original Screenplay. There's, there's a one great movie syndrome that Michael mm -hmm. Cimino is probably the mm -hmm. number one version of this. With Deer Hunter yeah. and just can't match it. John Singleton's in there for Boys in the Hood. He does a couple other decent ones, but it's never even close. The District 9 guy. Oh, right. Whatever his name was. District 9's really good. It got nominated. Yeah. You're not putting her in this category, are you? I just wanted to ask <laughs> you. Just wanted to make sure. I Listen, Virgin Suicides, Lost in Translation, Marie Antoinette, Somewhere, which so is we're good. really good. Check so it Marie out. Antoinette. That is a decade of stone okay. cold masterpiece. I just wanted to talk it out. I I know I knew how you feel. I'm, I'm setting you up. I'm excited to see Priscilla. I would say that the last decade has been what we would call minor works, but list, but that's okay. Those four. But Marie Antoinette not well received when it came out. Yeah. Well, they debuted at Cannes, which like right. You don't want to take that that movie to France. Um, what is interesting is the father daughter directing combo. Yeah. Which I think this might be it. I was trying to think of 
who was the daughter of a famous director who then made a movie that got nominated for an Oscar? No one that I can think of. It has to be just her and that's it, right? I, that is true. So she gets nominated for Best Director. Peter Jackson wins for Lord of the Rings. What are you going to do? The, the City of God guy, Master and Commander, Peter Weir, Mystic River, Clint Eastwood. Speaking of Peter Weir, a, the total tangent, nothing to do with anything. But like today is a day where my dreams are coming true. So let's yeah. do one more. Witness is a rewatchable. Me and Mallory Rubin and shirtless Harrison Just Ford. letting you guys go? I just, I think you would probably get sued, but <laughs> it would be a good way to go out. <laughs> Mallory watches it like every nine months. I'm just saying it's incredible. Sophia does not get nominated for Best Actress. Just Scarlett Johansson. Uh, I'm, I yeah. mean, uh, Scarlett. Yeah. Charlize wins for Monster. Keisha Castle Hughes for Whale Rider. I don't even know what that movie is. <laughs> I don't remember it either. Diane Keaton for somebody, Something's Gotta Give got nominated for an Oscar. Listen, are you coming to me questioning? I'm just saying, Nancy got nominated for an Oscar at the Oscar. She's wonderful Over in Scarlet? that film. Well, I, again, you've you've named another performance that we don't remember. Who can say whether it's deserving or not because we don't remember it? But let's let's not cast aspersions at Diane Keaton for something's got to give. Godfather, Samantha, yes, something's got to give. No, she's great. Samantha Morton in In America. <sighs> not yeah. Naomi Watts and 21 Grams. I remember at the time people thought that performance was a thing. I haven't seen that movie in 20 years. My but dad made us go see that on Christmas. It's personally upsetting to me that Scarlett didn't get nominated. I agree with you. I like, just don't I know actually why. Can't believe I just don't she know why Diane Keaton has to bear the brunt of I'm that. I'm just upset. throwing out five actresses who okay. got nominated. I'm saying Scarlett should have been on the list. Here, I'm, I agree. We're, we are, this is a place of agreement. As you know, I appreciate and enjoy the Nancy Myers collection. You do. I was surprised that one of them got a performance nominated for an Oscar. That's, I didn't really know that was the goal of those movies. That is her signature film. 2003, very important okay. movie year for me. Something's Gotta Give and Lost in Translation. $4 million budget. It made $118.7 million. That's wild. Which is just nuts. Our guy, Roger Ebert, who loves story. And loves performance. Four stars. Just, just laid the smack down with a four down. star gem. Um, you know, you can go read online, but he has a lot of... Uh, and then I think he put says it... says two wonderful performances. Bill Murray has never been better. He doesn't play Bill Murray or any other conventional idea of a movie star, but invents Bob Harris from the inside out as a man both happy and sad with his life, stuck but resigned to being stuck. I thought that's well put. Beautiful. You ready to do most rewatchable scenes? Yes. I can't wait to see what wins from your end. I think I know what my answer is, but I'm I'm ready to have a conversation with you. The TV commercial, the first one. Sure. A prostitute shows up in Bob's room screaming at him. Okay. It's just a really crazy, funny scene. I just wanted to mention it. Anna Ferris shows up for the first time. The Scarlet's expressions during this scene are so great of her sizing her up, being like semi disgusted, kind of mad at her husband. There's just a lot going on. Just sitting there. Yeah. It's kind of corner, almost her Oscar really clip. Yeah. I have the second on a fair scene that bleeds into the second Bob and Scarlet scene when um when she's like, Will you try this power cleanse? It's amazing. And then she goes <laughs> over to Bob's table and he says, I'm trying to organize My a dad prison was break. Actually an anorexic. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Bob and Scarlett go out in the town. Yeah. We get Bill Murray singing karaoke for Elvis Costello and Brian Ferry. Mm -hmm. We get Scarlett singing a pretender song. We get a really, really low scale acoustic version of, uh, more than this, which is a mm -hmm. classic, classic, yes. classic. And then uh, a very tender moment, she puts her head on his shoulder. So we have that scene. We have the sushi scene, which is just, it seems like they improv the whole thing and Bo Murray's just making her laugh. I'm just throwing in it on a fire mm -hmm. uh, singing karaoke for fun. Then we get that big scene in bed that we talked about. Yeah. I'm stuck. Does it get easier? Yeah. The more you know who you are and what you want, the less you let things upset you is one of the things he says to the advisor. She does comes up with the every girl goes through a photography phase, which I loved because I think I actually think feet, that might be true. That so yes, that has stayed with me for twenty years. Your life are you talking about kids? Um, the most terrifying day of your life is the day the first one is born. Your life, as you know, it is gone, never to return. 
but they learn how to walk, they learn how to talk. You want to be with them and they turn out to be the most delightful people you will ever meet in your life. I thought that was the best 20 seconds to it's sum up so... what it's like to be a parent I've ever heard in a movie. It's really beautiful. It's and like he, perfect. Yes, it's perfect. And he has kids, so it's like completely genuine for him. Um, but as you said, Sophia said that this was a really tough scene and they didn't nail it and they had to come back and do it. And for whatever reason, the chemistry was off and then they, and they figured they got it out. It. Yeah. But it's the most important scene in the movie. We'll debate whether it's most rewatchable. I have Scarlett walking around Tokyo with, with no dialogue, just music. Right. I like when she's giving... Bob shit about the hookup mm -hmm. when she's pissed off. Well, she is closer <laughs> to your age. age. Yeah. You probably watched the same movies in the 50s. He's like, there wasn't someone else to shower you with attention. The last night in the hotel bar, the elevator goodbye, which I also have for the Kid Cudi Pursuit of Happiness Award for Best Needle Drop when the the other hotel singer is doing I'm So Into oh, yeah. You. <laughs> A really good version of it. <laughs> that can't it just kind of comes in I mean, right that's away. That's a really good needle drop. That can't in this movie. That can't. Well, Phoenix be probably wins, but I just wanted to well, shout it well, out. Well, I for me, it's the Jesus and Mary Jane at the. Well, I had that as yeah. well. The final scene, um, just an incredible ending, all time. Also, that Jesus and Mary Chain song, which mm -hmm. I those that's my music. That I posted a playlist I last night because I was so excited on the drive today. You yeah. and I are really eighty one eighty six beautiful. That's really? my but the Jesus and Mary Chain like that's a fucking old song, but yeah. it doesn't sound like it's an old song, no. and it's just perfect. I mean, the ending of this movie makes the movie no and, question, and has become its own thing. Yeah. So I guess the ending has to be the actual answer to this. But I have different answers. First of all, I just, my husband wanted me to mention the golf shot. Um, he just, you know. He, the great Zach Barron? Zach Barron. Well, Zach told me that it, Bill Murray did it in one take, which I was not able to verify online. Um, oh, the putt in the hotel room? No, the no, swing on the, off, off the, the tee. Drive, he right? goes golf off the drive, right? Off the tee. And he has a pure stroke. Yeah. He, yeah. Oh, interesting. That was a one shot. That's what Zach said again. Wow. That's just well, my Zach husband who reads a lot about golf on the internet. Yeah. Um, mine is probably the karaoke. Don't so, you think? I had that as well, and I didn't know if that was going to be a controversial opinion. But, you know, I grew up, one of the first SNL characters I ever really loved was Bill Murray doing the nightclub, the nightclub singer. <laughs> I've seen when he of it, yeah. when he does the Star yeah. Wars, like Star Wars, if they could <laughs> bar wars, and he just, I just never seen anything like that. So anytime he goes into the silly Bill Murray yeah. mode, I'm happy. So he does that with the first song, but then more than this, more than it's this kind is, of emotional. Yes. Oh no, it's incredibly emotional. Yeah, that, I mean that's my other needle drop. Yeah. B because when and he does she's wearing it, the pink wig and they're just hanging out with these weird people they but met. But then also when she does uh brass and pocket and you know Which is really good, even though she doesn't sell it that hard. Really good, but when she's like, I'm special, and then when he does the special, special. back at her I mean, yeah. your heart just splits open. It's so good and he's so good in it. So I, th I for me it's karaoke because also when I hear the Brian Ferry song or Brass and Pocket, I always think of those exact scenes. Brass and Pocket is an unbelievable karaoke song, and I'm glad they stumbled into that. Too. I would have that 1A, um, the lying in bed scene 1B, and the um, the ending 1C. But the ending is just... Those are the three... Those those are the spine of the movie. You yeah. can't have the movie without like those three moments. The ending's up there for me. Like, really, like, high up there. Like, if Shawshank is a 10 out of 10... <laughs> I'm not saying this is a 10, but it's up there. It's in the nines. It's really hard to end a movie. Like most yeah. people don't get it right. So when they just absolutely land the plane, it's exhilarating. And the fact that you don't know what they say to each other. Do you want to do this now? Let's do it later. Okay. Because I, it sort of goes against my movie ethics. But in the, in the process of watching the movie... You don't know what they're saying to each also, other. Also, I like that they don't end up together. And yeah, that when he exactly. goes to catch her up, you think they're going to start making out. No, and then that's the end of the movie. And that's not moment, the point. And then as Bill Murray is walking away, it's his Oscar reel. Like as he looks back at her yeah. and all of the the emotions and like actually the joy on his face all at once. It's unbelievable. 
Yeah, they didn't have the last scene after when he gets back to the States yeah. and his wife's like, so who'd you hang out with <laughs> right, in Tokyo? Well, we have a category it's for like, that. Well, yeah. I met this 18-year-old girl. And um, All right, so we agree on that. What's age the best? Early 2000s Tokyo. I don't know if it's still like this now, but it have is one of been? the- I've never been, but it is either. one of- My wife and I were talking about last night. It is one of those movies where you're like, kind of need to see this. At some point in my life. I It's on the top of my yeah. list. I really would like to go, unfortunately. Will you stay at the a, Park Hyatt? Yes, I would like to. Hotel bars with piano players have aged the best for me? Is there a better hotel bar? No. I like the Sunset Tower bar, but it I'm just thinking for, for as a movie location. Oh, it's a movie. Oh, I thought has you were movie, just like in life. <laughs> has a movie used a hotel bar better? No, not or not as memorably. And certainly I can't think not of lounge sing singers as no. memorably. Also, I had to, what stage the best smoking cigars and cigarettes in bars. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a, a good one. It's like, ah, maybe we should go back. <laughs> we all know lung cancer is bad and smoking. We get it, but let's go and back. Scarlett says, like, I can quit later. Yeah. I, like, I like it. I don't smoke that much. Bob and Charlotte never introduced themselves to each other. Oh, yeah. It's a, it's like kind of a That's weirdly true. good what's age the best when you watch. They never, he never, she never says his name to, to her or to him. She probably knows who he is. I'm guessing. I think she does. Because he's a pretty famous actor. And they, I, he has to know who she is because he sends the note to the hotel room. Yeah. Or at least knows, I guess. But he, he just knows there's like yeah, this yeah, cute yeah. girl in my hotel. Yeah. I also like the two guys recognizing Bob. And they're like, oh, yeah. Sunset odds. Loved it. Heard you did your own driving. Just so, like your classic awkward hotel bar interaction. What 70s movie star is he supposed to be reminiscent of? I I thought it was like a Gene Hackman type. That, yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a good poll. It seems like he was in like French Connection type of right. movies. What's age the best? Just Phoenix? They caught Phoenix pretty early. Because Phoenix's ne next album was the one that hit. I absolutely love Phoenix. Yeah. Also... A, a subset of this, you know who Sofia Coppola's current husband is, is Thomas Mars. Come on, who are you well, talking about? I, I don't know. I just, I don't know when you want me to do the gossip, but and everyone go read this Lynn Hirsch Hirschberg profile from 2003 because you can just see all the pieces moving. Like one of the scenes, they go visit Phoenix in the studio and Sofia asks to listen to a song again oh, and she boy. hasn't been in the contact with. Yeah, and by Marie Antoinette, Phoenix is like in, they, they play a song in the movie, hmm. so... There's tons of improv in this movie, which I think has aged the best because you can kind of pick out which ones where they just kind of let, kept the cameras rolling and let Bill Murray cook. I have for what stage the best, the trope of just dumping the husband halfway through the movie. It's like, you've served your purpose. <laughs> Goodbye. It's yeah. time for you to leave so we can really get the movie going. Much, it's like, I got to go do a photo like, shoot. Much like the making of documentary. <laughs> right. <laughs> totally. Uh, the soundtrack's aged incredibly yeah. well. Lots of uh, lots of good ones in there, and you can find really good Spotify playlists that have. I mean, it's immaculate. just the pure soundtrack or all the songs used in the movies. This last one I had for what stage the best um, when she says twenty five years. That's impressive about his marriage, and he says, "Well, you figure you sleep one third of your <laughs> life, so that knocks out eight years of marriage right there. So you're down to sixty to change." <laughs> <laughs> it's like that theory about marriage. It's like, no, really not good. really 25. Yeah. It's more like 16. That's good. What else did you have for what stage the best? The kind of pre-internet time period of this. In 2003, we had the internet, but... It was a benevolent internet. Right. and But it still also means that you have to send faxes and the wife is just calling on the cell phone. And all all of that, both the the disconnect that I think it creates, but also like the nagging intrusions... Yeah, would, would just be text messages now, you know? And I, I think all of that stuff is really funny. And the text, the texting and stuff actually would have made everyone more connected. Exactly. And what, and she would have been on the internet all the time and way less lonely probably. Right, she exactly. Like FaceTiming people. Yeah. All right, the Big Kahuna Burger Award for best use of food slash drink. Um, the restaurant, when they, they get brought all the raw food and they have to steam it and they're no. having that terrible dinner and it's just like, what do we do? And okay. It was the worst lunch ever. I thought it was just a fitting lunch for them. That and then true. have all the cocktails. I mean- Great cocktails in this movie. I just feel like Centauri time has to be- Yeah, Centauri time. Is, yeah. Okay. Den of Thieves, Benny Hanna Award, scene still in location. I mean, it's cheating to just say Tokyo or the hotel bar. I was going to say Park Hyatt. Yeah. Great shot, Gordo Award, most cinematic shot. Um, the opening shot of Scarlet's butt, which <laughs> there's 
all kinds of <laughs> there's all kinds of writing about like interpretations well, of why they started the movie that way. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. Now that we know she was 17, 18. 18. She was 18. Okay. Yeah. I you know. But she was really going for something. So the film scholar Todd Kennedy interprets it in terms of feminist film theorist Laura Mulvey's conception of the male gaze, arguing that, quote, the shot lasts so long as to become awkward, forcing the audience to become aware of and potentially even question their participation in the gaze. Okay. I, I Sure. Yeah. If that's if what that's you have what you for Great Gordo? It's certainly an interesting way to open a movie. I'll tell you it's that memorable. much. Especially on a 50-foot movie yeah, theater screen. It's abs- like, Wait. It's completely, it's memorable. Um, I have the one of ScarJo walking through like the Shibuya, you know, the which yeah. there's if looks very good, but also famously like they didn't have permits. So right. a lot of that they're either on the street or they filmed some of the shots from like the Starbucks yeah. up above. Um and then that like the end, the shot when they're hugging with the crowd around them and she's on her tippy toes. Yeah. I mean, it's okay. perfect. Butch's girlfriend award, weak link of the film. The phone calls with the wife are kind of, I know they I know their purpose. Um, oh, I think they're funny. <sighs> yeah. I don't think the actress is really that great. Okay. Say, hey, Bob. <laughs> it's little Johnny's birthday. <laughs> I don't know. It's I, I can't say those are my most fun parts of the movie. Well, they're uncomfortable. If he's about to call the wife, I'm like, I might be able to make some popcorn right now. Yeah, it's so funny because for me, it's when Scarlett Johansson's just like, wandering around looking confused. I'm like, yeah, okay, like you're young and right. you like don't know where you are. Like yeah. I get it. Would say it's the worst. Man, I did not have a lot for this. This movie so, is really good. So Scarlet being 18 is I yeah. I guess probably has an age awesome. Yeah. I don't like the scene with the prostitute in the in the room. It like I just it's the one time where I'm like, uh, I don't know. This is at the expense of everyone. I think so I'll defend it. Yeah. I think they're trying to prove just how weird this experience is for him, that he's in this foreign country. They think it's okay to send him this masseuse at night. I, and it's just like a crazy scene. I like, I get it. And I think there are like a lot of the movie is that it's the one where I'm just like, you could have cut it. You could have cut it. It's at her expense. They're doing all the things with the pronunciation where I'm just like, you know what? This is the one time where I'm like, this is not the most like sensitive uh, thought Fair. out part of it. So that, that's, that stuff doesn't work for me. I have for what stage the worst, the first scene when Bob and Scarlett have a drink. I'm calling her Scarlett, even though her name's it's Charlotte. My, she yeah. never says the name Charlotte. Yeah. I just wish this scene was better. Like, I feel like that should have been a rewatch because they have that great shot of them at the hotel bar. It's a wide shot of the two of them. They're getting to know each other, but I mean, maybe they're just trying to set up the second scene with them is so much better. Right. Where she, but, it, that's the one where she orders the vodka tonic. Yeah, she just comes and, and sits down like, with them. Have you bought a porch, it's late at night. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is my winner for what stage the worst. My daughter thought Bill Murray was Robin Williams. What? Because I watched this with her in Boston <laughs> two weeks ago. I watched this movie twice. And. <laughs> And she thought it was the guy from Goodwill Hunting, and I had to explain to her the difference between Bill Murray and Rob oh, Williams. Oh no! And then I tried to slit my throat for Men's yeah. End, and it didn't work. <laughs> what did she think otherwise? She really liked it. Yeah. Yeah. She 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 was into it. I, okay. If I'm doing the rating scale of how many times she looked up from her phone as she was doing TikTok or whatever right. else, like she was about two thirds invested in the movie. That's which pretty is good. Really high score okay. for her. All right. Yeah. Um, Ron Burgundy flew to work for a pee break. I mean, when Scarlett's wandering around the yeah. beginning, you could go there or, or any, when any phone call. When she's in Bill like the arcade tour. Is this the best title for the movie? I think so. Yeah, I'm with you. What's your favorite quote? The the feet, taking pictures of my feet. I'm stuck. That yeah. that whole speech. I mean, I definitely, like I said, I saw this when I was 19. Yeah. And I was like, oh no, mm. you know? And it has stayed with me. It's a useful summation of a, of, of being young and trying to do something. The Stephen A. Smith hottest take award. I actually have a hottest take. I do as well. You oh, you go first. Yeah. I mean, they're just there a week. It's not that long, you know? It's like, it's just, it's it not It feels long like enough. a month and a half. Well, it's just not really long enough for an existential crisis. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you're just there for one week. You can just have a couple of dinners and read a book and like get on with your life. 
<laughs> wow, you just undermined your favorite movie. No, what I are your favorite I mean, movies? You said hottest take. I That's just pretty kind of like good. A, a week is not that long. I'm coming in way hotter. Okay. Cameron Diaz's career was never the same after this movie. <laughs> You go on her IMDb, it just goes off a cliff yeah. right after 03. Yeah, that's it is really powerful. It's like Charlie's Angels too, and the, and then this. And I think everybody kind of, maybe they didn't want to admit it, but rethought their experience with Cameron Diaz, who had yeah. been on an absolute heater from 94 all the way through the early 2000s. That's Sweetest true. Thing came out the year before in 02. And then she never really got it back after this. I guess they stopped making that kind of gross out comedy in the same way or that you know they started doing the apatow version of it and there's no room for her well she does a... gangs in new york which she's terrible right in. yeah that was tough this comes out a year later yeah she's also in that that mode that happens to a lot of actresses where they have their five to seven year run and then people are like okay yeah i figured you out who's the next one and the next one comes in and then and then she retires she makes wine now have you had it it seems like she has a great life. Yeah. I'm just saying from the moment this I, movie listen, comes out, the it goes sideways. Bad. Yeah. Craig, do you like that one? Yeah. That was like, I'm just <laughs> playing a Craig. With... <laughs> Casting what ifs, I couldn't find any. I couldn't either. I guess it's just that basically if Bill Murray, I mean, there's really only like five American parts in this movie, but yeah. if Bill Murray didn't do it, I don't know what plan, plan B was. I had for the Ruffalo Hand and Rubinick Partridge overacting word, it's clearly the masseuse prostitute. Yeah. Just yeah. completely over the top. Um, Best That Guy Award, there's only five people in it that we would have recognized and we kind of know who all of them are. Right. I guess Giovanni Ribisi, maybe 10 years from now, could be that guy. Who people he really hasn't been in that many things the last 10 years, but he, he definitely was Giovanni Ribisi in 2003. In yeah, exactly. Doesn't count. All right. Deanne Waiters. I mean, Anna, Anna Ferris, Ferris. I don't even yeah, know how was, there's another. My, my only question was, is she in it too much? No, to she's the, not okay. actually. Then, she's got she's like three might, scenes. You could rename it. For oh, this. yeah. 100%. Recast the couch. Couldn't find anything. So half fest in her research, we talked about it, but um, a lot of what she found with this character was shit she went through, like mm -hmm. kind of being with Spike Jones and yeah. feeling like kind of an ornament on the side and... And I think being young and being lost, I mean, she was in yeah. Godfather 3. People did not enjoy it, as previously discussed on the rewatchables. She's and then, sadly uh, miscast. Yeah. And then, she, I mean, she is. So I, and I think she... We had on... We did My Cousin Vinny and we solved who should have been Godfather Tomei, 3. Marissa right? Tomei, yeah, that is really good. That It's such a shame. We I, just I can't go back podcast. in time and redo that. No, I know. It, it was not... It, it was not her apex. We now. probably Let's can soon. Way. With AI, you'd be able to shove Tomei in Godfather oh, 3. God. I'd love to see that happen. Okay. <laughs> I just... I don't know. I think everybody... I don't want Francis Ford to spend his remaining time uh, doing that. He's too busy on Instagram. I will say if any director was going to go back in time with his old IP and him. figure out a way to, to bastardize it, it would, it would be, be him. him. Are you following him on Instagram, by the way? Should I? It's incredible. I had no idea that he was... He's so committed. He's doing like, you know, all every single made up holiday about cinema. He celebrates oh with some nostalgia. He reblogs uh, Sophia's stuff all of the time. Oh. So he's like, it's proud dad mode is too. Is he still doing the movie, Megalopolis? Is yeah. That, is he I, posting about that? Uh, I, he is. He like posts thank you to his cast okay. that like some staffer has like animated, you know. Um, he does Q&As. He like posts about his breakfast every single time. He has he likes Chobani. I don't know. It's great. Really recommend it. The redheaded lounge singer was played by Catherine Lambert, who was not an actress. She was going to be my Dion Waiters if Anna Ferris wasn't. It's, yeah, we couldn't even discuss other candidates. Yeah. It was so clear who the winner was. When she, the first scene when she goes, "Thank you, we are Sausalito," <laughs> right. is like the funniest thing in the whole. Movie to She's me. great. The. Uh, Sophia saw her perform in Tokyo in 2001 and just tracked her down. Yeah. So the Centauri whiskey commercial was partially inspired by Sophia Coppola's dad made a real Centauri commercial with Akira Kurosawa in the 1970s. Yeah. And it is a real whiskey, which I always thought they made it up because I don't know enough about Tokyo, Japan stuff. I, I learned about it from this, you know, I don't. I learned about many things from this movie. So he's representing a 17-year-old Suntory Hibiki, which means resonance in Japan and won numerous awards. Are you a whiskey guy? 
Um, not always, okay. but I appreciate if it's a really good one. And I'm, if, I'm if not, I have a I'm friend who's fired also. up about it, and it's like, you got to try this, I'll okay. do it. But I usually order tequila. Okay. Because I'm old. This is good. I found this one. Coppola's decision to base the character of Charlotte's husband on Spike Jones. I'm sure you know this. Caused some friction with her and Michelle Gondry, a mutual friend of Coppola and Jones, who did a New York Times interview in 06 and said he confronted Coppola about it at the film's New York premiere. There was a character in Lost in Translation that was clearly based on Spike, and it was not nice. I don't believe in being mean-spirited or mocking, and I told her that. That's really weird to go public with that yeah. three years later. Well, they were probably breaking up at that point. Oh, they were definitely broken up. Yeah. Like, I think that I don't think he went to the Oscars with her by the yeah. time that she won. Like it, I, I think it was done when it was done. But to to I guess he took a side. The golf course where where uh, Bob played in Japan was the Kawajuko Country Club. It's a lot of letters and whatever the golf course was. It looks that was very it. You can go beautiful, find it up. Craig. Fantasy football, when you guys do a, a live show there okay. in Tokyo. Yeah. Try to get you a foursome date there. That's all I have for half s internet research, unless you had anything else. No, I'm, no I did. I mean, all of the gossip. Yeah. It just is wonderful. Apex Mountain. Murray, obviously not. But if we go older Murray, I think there's a combo. What's younger Murray? That, like, what's, what is his Apex it's, Mountain, then? It's either Stripes or Ghostbusters. It's probably okay. Ghostbusters. But, I mean, that would make Ghostbusters sense Ghostbusters was an absolute phenomenon and became yeah. one no, of I the finer movies remember. of the they're, 80s. They're still making them for some reason. For some reason. Scarlet? Mm, no, I it's don't not, think so. Could no. you say Could you say it's the best movie she's been in? I really like Marriage Story. I'll never watch that movie again. Really? That was a one and out. That's like Million Dollar Baby. It's like, good work, guys. <laughs> Please don't buy me a Blu-ray. <laughs> I had to rewatch it for Big Pick a few months ago. It's still, as as a child of divorce, it's a real gut punch. That's why but it, I can't but it's do really, it. It's powerful. It's really good. Can't um, say I had a, a ton of fun. The acting was extraordinary. And she's really, she's really great. good in it. And I think it's also, it, it's sort of like... Lost in Translation might be the best movie that she's been in, but it's kind of like the Bill Murray thing where I think that she's more powerful. You know, it's like the yeah. apex of her career is, is later on. Wasn't she nominated twice that year? Yeah, for she was also Rabbit nominated for Jojo Mary Rabbit. Story. Yeah. Yeah. I personally think the best she's been in a movie from a star standpoint was Matchpoint, but I don't know if that was her best acting performance. She's really good in it. What a messed up movie. Woody really... I, Woody yeah. really adopted her for like four or five years. Yeah. Sophia Coppola. I mean, I would say yes. Probably. Yeah. I think it has. Not to be. in my heart, but with the nominations I mean, she and she Oscar. wins an Oscar. Yeah, and this is Come her. I, I think so. Rabisi, he he had a big Friends arc before this. That <laughs> when Friends was like thirty yeah. million people a week. Centauri whiskey definitely. Tokyo. I, well, I in in movies for us. I don't know. I, I mean, it's real. Yeah, maybe for an American audience. I think Centauri for an American Whiskey. audience, yeah. Tokyo is a movie location? I don't think so. What is it then? What's the answer? I mean, I like maybe... Maybe a, as an American a, as movie location. As an American location. movie, a Western movie. I mean, I like a, Black Rain, but I think it's just me and Chris Ryan on that I think one. there's a very long tradition of Japanese movies set in Tokyo. So. No, I know. I'm yeah, thinking yeah, about yeah. Like, so, um, our American-wise, I think it's for possibly, yeah. The Park High at Tokyo, no question. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, it's it's like the White Lotus Hotel in season mm -hmm. two where it's like, yeah. I just kind of want to stay there now. I feel like yes. I know this place. Insomnia movies? Sure. What are the other candidates other than Insomnia with Al Pacino? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, something's got to give. They, they bond because uh. they can't sleep. Speaking of 2003 movies that yeah. had an important... I think a lot of movies, jet lag movies. This is probably number it's on one. It's a jet lag combo. Yeah. Phoenix the band. I'm gonna say no. Mm. No, you're right. No, it was 2009. It was that the the album that was such a big hit. Anything else for Apex Mountain? Carpet swatches. I like it. I I like all of that stuff. Yeah, um, that's more good than you do. But I couldn't come up with the best racehorse name. 
Park Hyatt. Park Hyatt's good. Yeah, yeah that's solid. <laughs> Maybe get a sponsorship out of it. Picking nits. Have some questions about Scarlett's marriage here. So don't we all? Isn't that the point of the movie? Well, so she graduates from Yale. Right. With a philosophy degree. Which puts her at 22-23. Yeah. So she graduated last spring, but it's the fall. So she could be... So she's she supposed to be, be 24? 24. Yeah. So where'd she meet this guy? In in New York. And this guy who seems like, I'm going to say he's like 29? Yeah. And but he's just like, like a, let's lock a, it down. Let's just get he's married. He's a jet set photographer. I guess so. She's young. Yeah. She has figured out literally nothing with her life, and she just gets married to a jet set photographer. I I think her rash decision is one of the major regrets and themes of of the movie. Yeah. Would you have liked to have heard her talk about that in the movie or no? I mean, she does in her own way. There, you know, when she calls the friend and she's like, "I went to a shrine and I didn't feel anything," right? And John is using all these hair products and I don't even know who I married. <laughs> the right. one line about the hair products all is right, kind of like all right. I need to know. He doesn't make a move on her when they're lying in bed, which I, I'm actually okay with, but I just want to talk it out. Yeah. Because she's kind of... She, well, she rolls over She rolls to over. That's the, that's the come like, hither oh, kind of move. Oh, boy. Yeah. But there is something... Neither of them is projecting come and get it. But then that last scene when they're in the bar, their faces are like right, they're a framed foot away in from such each other. Way. No, I know. And it is it is supposed to suggest that. And also at the at the terrible lunch she says, you know, I guess she's closer in age, which um implies that she's thinking of it that way. You're right that she's thinking of it. And like, I think I, she's throwing it out. He's like thinking a little bit about it too, but he is also talking a lot about his kids in that moment. There is like something sort of like confused between them, whether it's like a father daughter thing or a, and it, it's a romantic thing, but there are just like little moments of it. You know right. where I'm saying I, that I put it this way. Yeah. I think it's a good no play by him. I, I agree. I agree. It's a good, it's a good job by him. Yes. Another it, picking very it. different movie. We find out in all the research after the fact that the kiss they have in the ending was unplanned. Yeah. That is not my picking it. My picking it is, I wish I didn't know that. Yeah. Can, you want to do the ending stuff now? We don't have to. I had it for unanswerable questions, okay. but I also think we could do it right now. Okay. Let's do it right now. Well, I wish that I didn't know what the audio enhancement stuff revealed. So I didn't know that until... I didn't either. I got to say, I wasn't surprised. Do you want to talk? So this is, we're spoiling um, if people want to live the rest of their lives not knowing what Bill Murray whispered. So, Which, let me say, I recommend. Even well, though can you give the backstory, though? The backstory sure. of this whole scene. So, it, is it improvised that he, he gets out of the car is, is in the script, right? They tried a couple different ways right. with dialogue. They decide none of it works. And then Sofia Coppola decides... Whisper something to her, her. We'll never right. know what you whisper. Right. So then at that point, they're ad-libbing the whisper. And then he also ad-libs the kiss, which Scarlett doesn't know is coming. Right. Which is why her reaction's so kind of Surprise. sweet with the whole yeah. thing. Sweet and surprised. But we never know what he whispers. So it's kind of one of those leave it up to the viewer what they want the whisper to be. Right. And and has almost become a, like a meme. It is, it's a thing now for 20 years of what did this person say to this other person. Right. And... Well, I don't want to know. I Good. I'm glad. But here's well, the Well, Craig, yeah, you're about to I find know. out. I'm I'm really sorry. The nice thing is, I agree with you, Bill. It's like not exactly what I d I don't think I had an exact sentence, but the sentiment is kind of what I thought, right? So ish. Well, with we have a couple different possible options. Yeah. That one is the internet's terrible. Technology's awful. One is that Bob says, when John is ready for his next business trip, go up to that man and tell him the truth, okay? That, that to me, doesn't seem accurate. That's too many Agreed. specifics. There's another video that says, I have to be leaving, but I won't let that come between us, okay? But then closer inspection says, promise me that the next thing you do is go up to that man and tell him the truth. 
that that resonates feels yeah right but what's the truth that she doesn't love him that she wants something more that she needs to figure something else out that she that, that makes sense yeah that because like her character i think has a moment of revelation of she, as she says she feels stuck and this experience and this man like helps her realize she can like go out she doesn't have to be like a lost 24 year old forever in my head for the last 20 years yeah. i always thought maybe he said something like you're the best thing that's happened to me recently thank you you're special some just something <laughs> like that you're special the thank recently, you recently my heart sunk as soon as you added recently on to there's well, something about it well yeah i, I understand like, he loves his kids are, right but it's just like yeah but I, thank you for passing through my life you're a special person. I'm never going to forget you. Like, yeah. there's nine Mine different ways to go. Mine has always been, so, like, some, hopefully, like, more romantic version of, like, like, you'll figure it out. Like, you'll be, you'll be, you'll be okay. You'll be, this, like, this will, you're special. Are you glad you knew Craig? Yeah. Yeah. Craig's whole day is ruined now. Yeah. Sequel, prequel, prestige TV, all black cast are untouchable. I think this would be a really interesting prestige TV show and spending 10 episodes or eight episodes in Tokyo and you would get a little more of the Anna Faris character. Yeah. And well, then it's just, it's White Lotus, as you said. Maybe the Japanese commercial that that goes sideways. Right. I'm glad it was a movie as I'm, to me my answer is always, I'm glad this was yeah, a movie, but too. I'm just saying, talking it out. Yeah. To me, it's untouchable, but it does have the seeds of a, a White Lotus episode. Uh, series or season. We should mention the unofficial sequel was the movie three years ago that um, just never got there for me. Yeah, you didn't like it. As a as a woman of... I a, like pieces of it. As a woman of a certain age who also finds Bill Murray charming and would like to drive around New York with him and look at like Cy Twombly's or whatever, I enjoyed it. I just couldn't get there with Rashida Jones as yeah. I said three years ago. I don't think... I, I think she was given a fancy race car and couldn't drive it. I don't disagree. And that was why with the Scarlet performance in this movie, I feel like I, those kind of things don't get enough credit. Yeah. You know, like she's fucking amazing. They could have been some other actress from that generation. No, it's, and it's, like, a different it's an movie. amazing find. And then, I mean, she was, a, she was acting, but like, this is a discovery. And 20 yeah. years later, she's like one of the biggest movie stars. Is this movie better with Wayne Jenkins, Danny Trejo, Catherine Hahn, Steve Buscemi, Sam Jackson, J.T. Walsh, or Phil Pickerall? Chris is not here to do Wayne Jenkins. Yeah. I don't think any of these people should have been in the movie. Yeah. You could maybe talk Catherine Hahn as the, the lounge, lounge singer. singer. I yeah. have that okay. Down. okay, that's funny. Okay, it, great. But, you know, it, it would be a funny joke, but it would distract. Just one Oscar who gets it. Would I mean, you go Sofia Coppola or Bill Murray? It's very hard for me. I... Well, she got the Oscar, she got so the, it's Oscar, a, the, so, the category is nullified. Okay, so if somebody I can't actually give won the Bill, Oscar, if, if you, you said Bill Murray, I would, I would be okay with it. But I'm really glad that she got the Oscar. Probably unanswerable questions. Did Bill Murray's character pull the fire alarm on the last night? <laughs> <laughs> That's my theory. Is that he did? That's a good one. Thanks. I hadn't thought of it. Yeah, he wanted okay. one more, one more bite at the apple. Sure, I love Hanging it. Out. Didn't want to like it, make it seem too desperate, but had yeah. to get her out there. Yeah. Did Scarlett's character stay married? Oh, that is answerable to me. You think that's an answerable I think no that, fucking I think way? It's a, it's, a, it's a no, yeah. Where does Scarlett... No, here's, here's the unanswerable part of it. When Sofia Coppola wrote the movie, yeah. does she think that the Scarlett character stays with the husband? 100% no. Okay, so yeah. she's writing her way through her life. Where does Scarlett's character live in 2023 and who is she married to okay well she moved back to new york but then she could be part of the recent creative class exodus from new york to los angeles of of which i am one so maybe she lives on the east side of los angeles now i think she's selling real estate in greenwich or darian <laughs> she, she lived in new york met her husband he was like a hedge fund guy <laughs> 
they moved in, they had some kids, and now she's getting back into things. And she's think, selling some beachfront stuff. I think that she could be, like, mommy blogging, but in a way that she oh, thinks is cooler than the other mommy blogs. Cool personality. Great voice. Yeah. A lot of, lot of presence already, even at a young age. Right. Like, it's something... I could podcasting, real estate, yeah, something yeah, yeah. where she gets to have a personality, okay. get dressed up. That's, but that's why I think that she's found her way onto the internet and is being like, I, you know, I really liked bonding with my child in the middle of the night. Best double feature choice with this movie. I'll, I'll defer. Okay. So I picked uh, In the Mood for Love, which is the Wong Kar Wai film that Sofia Coppola like cited explicitly in her acceptance speech for an Oscar. And that's also how I learned about Wong Kar Wai, which is a cool thing about this movie. For me, at least, was I didn't know about Roxy music when I was, yeah. like, 19. Like, I didn't know about all of these things. Um, but it's just, like, an incredibly beautiful, incredibly romantic movie that is about two people who meet for, like, a moment in time. And then, I mean, I don't want to spoil it, but it's awesome. What year did that come out? 2000. Interesting. Yeah. So before Sunrise has a little of that too. Totally, though. yes. And that's another definite P- contribution. People passing through. Yeah. The Indian Red Zawatne Award for what happened the next day. I guess, Ooh. does Bob get divorced? What happens with Bob? No, I don't think he gets divorced. I think she does. She does, he doesn't, okay. Yeah. What piece of memorabilia would you want from this movie? Can I get a week-long stay at the Park Hyatt? <laughs> The actual room? <laughs> yeah. Is that is that available? I was thinking the actual bottle they used in the Centauri whiskey okay. scene would be cool. Um, I was thinking if if you if you said no, t- historically you've vetoed experiences. Um, yeah, I don't and, or that's homes. not memorabilia. Okay, then I so I'm not a watch person, but that watch that he has at the end, Craig, do you guys know what kind of watch it is? It looked quite nice. Okay. And you know, I guess my husband would like it. So that's what I would do. The Coach Finstock Award for Best Life Lesson. The more you know who, I'm sorry, the more you know you are, who you are and what you want, the less you let things upset you. I think it's a fucking great lesson. beautiful, yeah. Totally true. Yes. Who won the movie? This is tough because I, I was surprised how much I thought about Scarlett in this conversation. I mean, it's a two-hander. It's you can't have it without either of them, but Bill Murray, I, unless you unless you want to give it to Sofia Coppola, wins the movie. I think the answer is Bill Murray. I think the answer is Bill Murray too, and I think he needs it for his whole package. Yeah, for the thirty years that led up to this, I, I just think he needs it. Otherwise, he has that whole he's a com he's like basically Chevy Chase with then a couple good movies after and then he's in some Wes Anderson things but right. Chevy Chase never could have been in this movie right. and that's the difference and this combined with the Wes Anderson moment yeah, just it's makes just him a different a serious he had a he comes out of 03 with a different level of credibility yeah that had been working he'd been working toward for i would say 7 8 years and then after that no question yeah i mean this wins sofia it's, coppola an oscar and makes her career but i agree that so it's Bill Murray. i'm i was thinking of more contemporary guys this is mm-hmm. a recasting couch but yeah. like i think will farrell's at a similar point in his career oh interesting and this is the movie that he never made yeah that I think if he had made, and I actually think he could have been good in it, he would have had to totally strip back some of the Will Ferrell stuff, but I think he could have been good. I, I, he, I, I see what you're saying. You know I, what would, I, mean? I would watch Will Ferrell's version of this movie, it's the, whatever it's it the is. the thing that he needs at this stage yeah. in his career that he's never kind of landed the plane on. Yeah. All right, Craig, let's hear it. That's a great call about Ferrell. Thank you. Um, I love this movie. I, it's a, yes! You uh, haven't oh, seen it before, right? And we should right? mention Craig hadn't seen it. No. Oh, Craig, I, I was relieved. Yeah, we're, I'm relieved yeah. too, Craig. It's been on my list for a while. I, I, like Lost in Translation has always been one of those movies that I've just like never seen but always wanted to. Um, it feels like one of those movies that your opinion of it will change and you'll get different takeaways of it as you age, like mm-hmm. in different stages of your life. Because I, I so true. identified with the Scar Joe character and yeah. being like what it was like in my early 20s and just kind of like feeling that aimless feeling. Um, but... 
I I don't know. I had never seen a, a real movie like about like this kind of like romantic platonic relationship between an older man and a younger woman. I like that there was no sex. I like that nothing happened. I think Bob hugging Charlotte at the end of the movie is one of the most revealing or relieving moments in a movie in a long time. Like I was so nervous that he was going to spin her around and they were going to like have this big romantic kiss. Right. Yeah. And it would have sucked. And I actually think I, I, I don't love that they kissed. I think it it hurts it just a little bit. I think yeah. It, it, well, but it, it's not like an open mouth make out yeah, kiss. Yeah, it's not. I don't know. I don't think it needed to be there. Okay. I think it makes it one I, step too sexual. My wife and I were talking about this. It's not that sexual of a kiss. But now knowing but that it's, it's definitely a romantic kiss. Yeah. I, it is a romantic kiss. And it, it's funny, in the elevator, or like af after she comes down in the elevator, and when they say goodbye in the ho hotel right before this, they kiss twice and it's like, the side of the mouth and he's always like inching closer and it's incredibly awkward and we're like oh no I don't don't do that you guys don't know what you're supposed to do so there's something that to me is just almost a relief in the sense that it's not well to me it's not awkward the actual kiss well let me let me phrase it this way yeah if Bill Murray kissed you like that and Zach Barron was watching, oh, would no, he be he upset? Oh, no, he would be mad. Yeah. He, yeah, so he would it, be it mad. So it definitely... I think the elevator kisses are the perfect amount of awkward and they didn't need to go one step further. And now knowing that that wasn't even in the script, perhaps Sophia didn't even want that to happen. And obviously well, Murray made that move. But if it ended on just on discomfort and that awkwardness and of being like, well, I guess this was a nice thing that we don't really know what to do with. It's like, you know, when he leaves the message and he's like, so I guess goodbye and enjoy my coat that you stole from me. You know, that's funny. Mm -hmm. But if it ended on without the emotion, there's something about the kiss that is like, no, this was a real thing. This was earnest. There was, and I I don't like, want it to go any further. Moment. But like it is the it is putting the bow on the thing of like, this was something. And now it's over. I think you're both right. I was glad there wasn't an open mouth. Yeah, like, no, tongue that kiss. would. I oh, if that would have been awful. What a ruined tongue, movie. It was a oh. sweet kiss. Uh, it was sweet, but I was just like, I don't know. We, we've seen them kind of have their awkward sexual interaction. I, I don't know if we needed to end on the kiss. I agree. I don't want any sex in this movie. Craig, do you think because this movie's on Netflix, but it's not like featured on Netflix? Do you think this movie could have this one of those weird belated Netflix runs like what Suits had? No, you don't think it's too dated. Yeah, I, I, I think it's too slow. It's too intimate. It's too unique. I, this is a movie that, unfortunately, you have to, like, force somebody to watch. But when they watch, they would love it. Oh, I agree with go. him, yeah. Also, I like, like, the era of, like, the, the old sad comedian is mm -hmm. kind of gone. Like, the, like, comedians who actually have that, like, tragic quality to them, which, like, Bill Murray definitely has. Like, Steve Martin has, like, a sadness That's to him what we times. liked about Funny People, the first yeah. hour of it. It's, like, kind of, like, yeah. past his prime. Now all the comedians just Robin lead Williams. with the tragedy. Yeah, so seriously. you're like, I know, I know, it was like, tough. Like, Robin Williams had the sadness to him. I also like when people do movies, like, I don't know how much money Bill Murray made for this movie. It couldn't be a lot because it was a $4 million budget. But I like when older actors are just, like, doing movies for them and that's, not selling out. That's what, sorry to just derail the podcast at the end. Is $2 million an approach? appropriate amount to be paid for a whiskey commercial in tw two, 2003? Is it too much? I too think little? That, that, that Japan, China yeah. money, I, I have no context for. Also, that line Kobe that he would says, go there and make like 10 no, million I remember bucks for it, like, like one day. It used to be a thing. That and, line of Bob being like, I could be doing a play right now, but I'm like right. making a whiskey commercial for right. $2 million. That's like an actual, that's like what Bill Murray is doing. Bill Murray decided yeah. to do the play instead of getting paid. Some. Yeah. It's also like you can do the play next week. Um, yeah. Craig, had you have you seen any other Sofia Coppola movies? I don't think so. Wow. Okay. Also, one other picking nit. He's supposed to be on this trip for like three days, right? And he extends it. Yeah. Yeah. His wife is sending him carpet samples, for, uh, and he's on a three day trip, and she's FedExing him to Tokyo. Right. She can't wait. Right. Th I mean, that's the point of the character is that they're not in a good place in their marriage, and she is focused but it on even things. Make any sense. Other. She would have to mail it like the day he left. I agree. It's absurd. That's what's funny about it. I agree with you though. Yeah. She was like okay. a she was like a caricature. Yeah. I don't know who that woman What's was. your relationship with Scarlett Johansson as a as a 20 years of Scarlett? One of the like one of the few superhero characters or actresses, you know, in the Marvel characters that I actually respect as an actor and think that they have real talent outside of it. Mm. I think a lot of them, a lot of people I just mean, kind of think they're she and Robert Downey Jr. are really the only two people with serious careers. I don't think people my age feel that way about Downey because I don't think they wow. know any other movies he's in. Scarjo wow. has a lot of modern movies. Yikes. Yeah. Okay. Oppenheimer's probably the first Downey's Iron Man to like everyone under 31. Yeah. yeah. 
Wow. Oppenheimer's the first time most of us have seen him do anything dramatic. Yeah, mm. and that was boring, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, the third hour, I was I was ready to go. Uh, great movie, though. <laughs> Ended the podcast hot. <laughs>